Hi guys. I start already thanking you for not running away and staying in the room to listen to us. As I said, I'm Sandra, this is Peter. We are both from the Atingi team and that's actually what we want to present to you today. Atingi, which is actually a very special Moodle story from the community and I'm very confident in using the word special since uh, we were just acknowledged as a game-changing digital solution to reach the uh, SDG of quality education and were awarded for being such a game changer by the UN just two days ago in uh, New York. And that makes us quite proud and even more connected to the vision that Martin shared on Tuesday with us in his keynote speech to like leave really no one behind if it comes to uh, lifelong uh, learning. So who are we actually? Do you want to make my Yes. So uh, who are we actually? So uh, Atingi is a digital learning platform for learners in all partner countries of German Development Corporation. So uh, we offer skills needed on local job markets in countries like Nigeria, Brazil, Vietnam, Cuba, Madagascar, Iraq, you name it. And uh, what uh, Atingi actually provides is inclusive, accessible, relevant, and safe digital learning for these countries in the global south uh, to tackle the challenges of education, as you all know, availability, access, and uh, relevance. We are actually free of charge to all the learners, and uh, we are accessible online and offline. So if you followed uh, the input of Maxwell yesterday from EduTab, uh, he spoke about the box. We are also using the box, and we are actually built to like serve um, local needs and realities of mostly very underrepresented groups or hard to reach um, groups. And before uh, Peter will go into more detail about the platform, let me just point out some more uh, three or uh, four or more uh, details because. To, to underline that we are that special, I think. <laughs> so we do have a strong focus on um, non-formal learning. So we are not just a classroom, but we like have to adapt to the um, to the needs of the global south. So we are offering like much more mobile learning on the go, uh, self-paced. We also offer low-tech solutions that enables um, that enables learning even for farmers that stand in the middle of the field of, let me say, Kigali, Rwanda, somewhere. And um, we also work B2B2C, so we have no learners like classically assigned in some kind of automatism, but we invite and win them with quality content and addressing their actual real uh, needs. We do work OER based, so to foster inclusivity with um, much of our content being open license, it can be adapted by anyone, anywhere. And last point, but very important one, uh, we have made reducing the digital divide a central issue to our project. So we really tackled gender inequalities and the disadvantages for females in our partner countries regarding to uh, access to uh, learning opportunities. Uh, let me sum that up with some numbers. We have uh, 800,000 learners registered on the Atingi platform. Uh, nearly 200,000 of them are people with low formal education and 40% of them are female. So this is again something which makes us really proud. So I hope I used my two minutes wisely to make you curious about Atingi and I'm now handing over to Peter to share some more detail with you about the platform. I'm, I'm walking back. Thank you, Sandra. Um, yeah, um, as Sandra mentioned, uh, we are kind of a special use case, but that means that we are not addressing like uh, typically um, lear um, students and teachers, but we have like this B2B to C approach and uh, are trying to reach uh, learners for our partners. So uh, we are a kind of in between solution, and um, our learners don't get um, like uh, access to our um, courses. 
but uh, we need to get their awareness. So um, we are looking here at a classic conversion funnel as you have it with uh, shops or other um, online solutions. And as I said, like we have a lot of um, challenges in this way, which is low connectivity, low digital literacy and language barriers. So we have um, to adapt everything to these special needs of our learners. Um, and um, for the first step awareness, it's really important for us um, to try to reach uh, the learners in partner networks um, in partner countries and therefore uh, we are really um, we are in need of um, word of mouth as um, our first marketing channel um, that we get people to talk about Atingi and that's really hard as you can imagine. Um, so what we are trying to do is uh, have a um, network of micro influencers which we can address somehow, which we can reach somehow in these regions which um, spread the word around the Tingi and that's really helpful if you have like use cases where they reach their goals or um, have some um, um, yeah, first successes with us. Um, second level is consideration. We don't uh, use um, uh, Moodle um, LMS as a singular solution, but we try to use every channel we can. So we try to have um, different landing pages, apps, uh, but also uh, beneath uh, the um, Moodle box, which is called a Tingina box with us, uh, we try to use IVR or um, every channel we can um, to connect to our learners. Um, but like here I think we can um, consider um, our biggest um, platform which is the Moodle LMS um, for um, the low digital literacy um, aspects because um, if we just uh, look at that it's really hard for us to um, get um, our learners through the learner user journey because they have a completely different understanding of um, how um, to use uh, digital platforms. So for example, registering is a really big issue for us. Um, to have a common understanding of um, using a password, uh, we have um, cases where they, uh, the learners can't understand special characters, upper characters, the MFA. Like it's really impossible to, to um, get a few learners um, even registered. Um, and we are trying really hard to um, overcome these uh, barriers and um, obstacles for them. Um, at the moment we implemented SS, uh, SSO for Facebook and Google, which was a really good first step. But also um, a few um, learners don't have email addresses where we really need to go with mobile numbers or really help them on the ground to register, which is really um, hard and uh, a long way to go. Um, second one, and that's the final point of the learner user journey, then I faded out here because it's a, it's a long journey, uh, personalization because we have a lot of um, different partners, a lot of different courses in 21 languages on our side and if you come to a platform like this you're just overwhelmed. So we are working hard to try to personalize um, the experience for the learner on um, our platform to get them what they need even if they don't know it at that point to um, let them be inspired. Um, and why we're showing you this, um, we try to get um, like different projects or um, people of the community who have uh, maybe uh, same problems or um, could relate to that and maybe um, help us in the way or we can um, support with um, sharing um, user research because we have a lot of data from people from the ground and um, data from uh, different countries, use cases offline, online, mobile and desktop. Just to show you how um, Atingi is structured, um, B2B to C, we already said it, um, we are dependent on our partner network, we're just providing the platform um, and every course, every um, content which is um, on uh, Atingi is done by our partner networks, so they are developing in which format ever, uh, we are just providing it to our learners which is a really big um, yeah, challenge uh, to, to make it accessible. Um, but there we really um, try to emphasize to reusage and localization because um, GIZ has um, um, uh, in every country of the world, nearly in the global south, have the same issues of um, resources like water which uh, um, we want to um, secure and you don't have to do the same course, the same content over and over again. So we really try to localize and reuse there. But the main point here is we don't want to develop for our learners, but we want to understand the content needs, the platform needs, and co-create with them. So that's one of the most important 
um, items for us to understand their obstacles and to design with them. And uh, finally, on the top right corner, open source technology, that's a fourth partner for us because we want to uh, use open source as much as we can and then share our solutions, plugins, translations, and also user research which we um, can gather from um, our work. And that's, um, yeah, I think most important that we don't build a single solution but uh, use uh, Moodle core as much as we can and uh, try to um, uh, yeah, get the plugins uh, mainstream, so to say, to um, yeah, use it with the community together. Just uh, two minutes left. Uh, I want to give you a short overview of our uh, tech stack which we use at the moment. We're trying to build um, um, something on top of Moodle, but um, looking at the uh, vision which we heard yesterday, I think a lot of items are already um, being considered, and that's really nice. Um, we, are, um, we have implemented Keyclock as an identity um, management system with a single sign-on. Um, for data, we included Metabase and Matomo um, to really track and optimize the conversion funnel, because you have to imagine like if 50% of registrations are dropping out, it's really hard uh, to understand why, in which language, on which device that's happening. And with the tracking, we, we um, can like finally sort out what the real obstacles are here. And uh, the last one, Zamat, as a ticketing system, system um, we are trying to um, give support um, to every learner. So we implemented that as a um, solution where every learner can reach us at any time and we are answering every question. Sandra mentioned it, 800,000 users, you can imagine how many, language, uh, how many messages in different languages come in. It's really a challenge, but um, we are trying to do that. And with Zamat, it was really um, a time saver for us, and it's uh, more easy to, to handle all these topics. Yeah, one minute left, so maybe if there are questions now, or we are happy to answer them um, outside. We are here for a few days. Thank you.